Today I'm here with five tips for brand new players inside of Rise of Kingdoms so that you could progress more efficiently and get more rewards. What is up my friends, my name is Echo, welcome back to the channel where today we're focusing on some things that you need to do. And you know what, I'm gonna actually be doing all of these things that I discussed today live with you on the channel. Now, if you've never played Rise of Kingdoms before, I urge you to give it a shot. I actually have my download link in the description of this video for Bluestacks if you wanna give it a try, completely free and a lot of fun. Now, the first thing I wanna to talk to you guys about are builder recruitment contracts. This is number one and something that I have not done yet. I typically don't use this in the very beginning because things upgrade so quickly. But when you use these contracts, notice that I have four right now, you're able to have two builders working at the same time for two days, which means for me, I can have eight days of two builders working at once. We're free to play. We're spending zero money in the game. We need to take advantage of these types of things. So I'm gonna Actually use one right now with you guys and notice we do have our tavern upgrading right now we have to get something else going and it's gonna be the trading post because we are trying to make our way to City Hall level 14 that's next we're gonna kind of grind our way up because remember you don't have to catch everything up around your city along with your city hall get your city hall up get the rewards for being a stronger city hall and then catch everything up it's called min maxing and it's the best way to upgrade yourself and gain power in rise of kingdoms now i also want to actually speed this structure up right here because it's got seven hours left in the upgrade but it's been going for a while so we're gonna actually use two of these speed ups right now and i have a 60 minute we'll we'll use actually two the 30 minutes boom we wasted a minute but that's okay so now our tavern is up to the city hall level and what i need to do is get my wall up the wall is the next step as well as the trading post of course which is going with our second builder right now we're gonna do this 21 hour upgrade and ask for help now it's always important to make sure that your alliance center is upgraded as high as possible because every time you upgrade it you get one extra help which cuts time off of your upgrades and now while we're down here looks like we have another rally that we're gonna join right now because we have been rallying low hars like crazy waiting into that later on in the video. Now guys, if you like Rise of Kingdoms or if you're kind of looking into it and interested in learning more, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you ring the bell because I've been coming out with rock videos every single day and your support has been amazing. If you want to see more, more Rise of Kingdoms in the comment section below. You guys keep me rolling. I appreciate it. Don't forget that thumbs up too. All right, let's let's go back. Now that the Lohar event is over and we have all of these things to summon Lohars and to attack them, that's what we've been doing like crazy for the last couple of days. As you can see, we're about to go in on a rally right now because the rewards we've been getting have been incredible. Let me take a dive in there and show you. Notice we had a victory, the trial complete, we got rewards. Another one with rewards. No heads for me there though. Come on now, what? where are all of my Lohar heads? Who's stealing them all from me? Did we get any here? No, we got some gems. Did we get any here? No. The last few, I've not gotten any Lohar heads. Look at this. There we go. Finally one on that one here. This is what, like I've been saying, I've been doing all morning at least. So this is what you want to do, and let me show you why. Now you'll notice that Lohar has the blinking arrow up. That's because he's ready for an upgrade. When you're going over to his skills, check it out. We have 52 of his sculptures all grabbed for free. You never want to use these on a Lohar. You don't want to use the universals. Save them for other commanders because you can get his for free. We're going to upgrade him because what I really want to do is I want to get this first skill. We need to max out this first skill, dealing direct damage to a target, damage factor of 200, and healing a portion of slightly wounded units. Overwhelming force is massive to get to max where the healing factor is going to go to 450 because then when we can experience him all the way max, when we can max him out, he's going to get that healing factor of a thousand. Then you're going to be able to go out and, and just rally barbarians after barbarians like 50 in a row and never have to return home. It'll save you on those action points. So right now we're going to upgrade Lohar once. Yes, and obviously it's going to go to that skill because the other one's already maxed. We're going to do it one more time. And over the next day or so, I'm going to be getting as many of these sculptures as I can. Remember, even if you're not active in the attacks, you still do get rewards from other in your alliance doing attacks and you can get Lohar heads for free. At the end of the day, you want Lohar to be one of your number one barbarian smashing units inside of the game and you can do it for free. There's no reason not to. And we're actually about to rally some more Lohars right now, so let's kick back and watch how brutal this battle can be. Oh, 
that's what I'm talking about. And those were some of the good ones as well. We did get one Lohar sculpture from that battle. It's just fun. It's a grind, but it's fun. But why don't we kick back and give you guys an update on my status. So as you can see right now, we're sitting at 18,000 gems. We have yet to spend one gem inside of the game. I have spent nothing, but I will tell you, I'm most likely gonna spend some gems today as we progress through because there's something worthy of spending them on that you need to know about. That's something we'll get to later. Also, my power, 635,330. Before we heal up these troops, which will increase that just by a little bit. Now, also, guys, we have yet to get a legendary commander. We have zero legendary commanders, but I have two golden keys and a free one, hoping that live with you right now, we could pull in a legendary. No, we got Sarka, who I'm always good with. You're not going to hate on that. We're going to open up another golden one right now. No, still no legendary. One more. Still no legendaries. The grind continues. It is brutal that we've been playing on this account for two or so weeks and have yet to pick up a legendary commander. But if we go to commanders, it looks like something. Sarka can get an upgrade just from that itself. We can go into skills. Uh, what is this one? We want... Yes, we want that. So let's go. Can we get it? No. Oh, that's great, though. It's okay. We got another good one. Gaining the increased gathering speed. We're using her for gathering. That is what I'm talking about. Now, you also want to take advantage of rewards inside of the game, and this is a big part of this game, part of the tips that I'm talking about here today. Notice we did complete the Rise of Kingdoms event. This is an event that spawns when you first spawn into a kingdom, when the kingdom is brand new. The chest is there, and I'm going to grab those rewards right now. Let's see what we grab. 81 emblems of loyalty, which we now can take and spend in the loyalty shop. And this is where things get really important. So pay attention. So where do you spend these emblems that you got? And you get them here inside of the Hero Returns event. This is where you can spend them. Notice I can get some Sun Tzu's. I can get some Silver Keys. We can go and get more resources. Or we can come here and get Cleopatra. Now Cleopatra is a gathering commander. And as a free-to-play player, you're most likely not going to be spending your resources, your in-game stuff that you farm and that you get from events on a gatherer. So I'm not going to be using those sculptures on upgrading hers or skills, but she is a gatherer at that, and it is not a bad idea to unlock all of the commanders in case you ever decide to use them at a later time. Maybe changes come to the game, you never do know. So we're actually going to pick up Cleopatra as my first legendary commander. And we're gonna do it right now. Summon her. Welcome to the party. You are now mine. You are my commander. And I am excited to add you to my arsenal of gatherers. But here's the thing, guys. I'm not actually gonna upgrade her. We're not gonna be spending any resources to upgrade her. I will use uh, her for some barb farming just to get her higher in level, or I could tome some knowledge into her as well. But I'm not gonna be doing much for her skills because we are not using, we're not using these on her. These need to be for our attack commanders, but we will slowly but surely upgrade her with time and, you know, at least get her moving along the lines a little bit. But here's the thing. Before you use any skills, you want to unlock the second skill. The first skill right here, healing slightly wounded units, that's not going to benefit me for gathering. But this one will. So I'm going to get her up to level two. Then I'm going to start, you know, upgrading her whenever that time happens. So now what's going on in the game is the Mightiest Governor, where on day one, you have to train troops. It's literally all you're doing. You're getting rewards for training troops and actually i think i have some troops that we can collect there we go we're gonna also go here train them up this is not a bad time for you to utilize speed ups if you think you can compete in this event because if you use the speed ups you will get these rewards and then you could possibly place higher in the mightiest governor event now as a free-to-play player are you really gonna place better and higher than people that are spending money in the game most likely not so i would not use all of your speed ups on things like this but at least make sure that you get the rewards now i have plenty of time i'm gonna be able to get these rewards just from just from having my things upgrade and be trained organically without using any speed ups uh look there's six hours left so it's pretty easy because we already have some that are going to be done very, very soon. Make sure you collect those rewards. Make sure you participate in the events. And if you don't know what's happening, look at the event calendar. It literally tells you what's happening and gives you explanations for all of them. So make sure you're in tune. Know what's going on in your kingdom. Know what events are going on and participate in those events. 
that equals progression. Now we already talked about VIP and I was planning on spending on VIP so I could unlock the Cleopatra, but I already was VIP five. I did not even realize it because VIP, the only way to get it is through getting it from rewards or through gems, which remember guys, the one of the top three ways to spend gems is on your VIP because at the end of the day, you wanna get at least to VIP 10. So typically, I would be spending my gems on VIP, anything over 10,000 gems, because I like to keep 10,000 as a nest egg. 10,000 so that when the wheel comes, I can spin it and get some new legendary commanders. That's at least the thought process, that's the goal, but I'm waiting for something special to spend these gems. And that something special is an event called More Than Gems, because when you get this event, you get rewarded with stuff for spending your gems. So when More Than Gems comes, I'm gonna spend my gems on my VIP as much as I can up to the 10,000 nest egg that I had at the bottom. So when that comes, and I don't know when it's coming, I, I didn't see it on the calendar at all. Let me, let me take a closer look. No, it's not there. So I'm gonna wait a little while before I spend either a wheel, more than gems, or a holiday event. That's when I'll be spending my gems. Until then, we're sitting on 18,000 of them. And no, I have not spent one gem yet. Tip number five is to participate in these rallies. Get involved. It's easy. It's free. All it costs is the action points for you to actually go on in. You click a button, you go attack them, you get rewards for doing it. You get XP for doing it. It is really a great thing. And then when you need more, you just come on in here, you push the plus button, and you get 500 free action point recovery replenish bottles, I guess, every single day. 500 for free, which I have gone out and used and they're gone, but I've been using them now because the rewards that you get are worthy of using your action point recoveries. Use them when you're rewarded for using them. And that's really the whole, the whole thing behind the entire game. Use stuff when you're rewarded for using stuff. Don't use it when it means nothing. Participate in what is going to benefit you, not just what you feel like playing for the day. And remember, we got Horn of Counterattack the other day. Well, we're still waiting a day and 20 hours before we can collect those 1,500 gems and three golden keys. So now I guess the question is, I have a legendary commander because we got Cleopatra. Does it count as unlocking a legendary commander because I grinded her through an event? I'm not sure if that actually counts. Although we can no longer say that we don't have any legendary commanders because we have Cleopatra. But guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. We're gonna go on out to Cleopatra Animations. Remember to come back tomorrow for another Rise of Kingdoms video and subscribe with the bell rung so you don't miss it. Now have a great day and be good.